Good morning, everyone, and happy first day of spring. Hooray! Um, I'm here because Dr. Karen Becker, a very prominent holistic veterinarian in the States, paired up with Rodney Habib, a very conscientious pet parent, and they made a documentary called Dog Cancer Series, and I think I've talked about it before, but now they're releasing it for sale, so I wanted to give you some of the tidbits from the workshop that they did this past week and see if you're interested because I think this information is absolutely revolutionary to anybody who has a pet with cancer or a breed that's extremely prone to cancer such as golden retrievers. So the first part of the workshop and this workshop was free so I am allowed to give you this information because I'm helping to promote their stuff. Um, the first is how the environment impacts the dog's DNA. So we know that the cure rate of cancer is very low and typically once your pet gets cancer, it's more about pain management than anything else and improving the quality of life. But the cancer rates have risen from one in 10 to what less than one in two. Hello to whoever joined me. Um, the most common triggers that people think of when they think of cancer are obesity, radiation, stress, viruses, toxins, but not a lot of people talk about diet which is the central point of the entire workshop and series. Overbred dogs, which is basically what we have now because everybody, the, the dogs we have now have the same DNA as the dogs that used to be around because we just keep breeding them and breeding them. And it actually damages their DNA. So it's less resilient to all those triggers. It's more prone to genetic damage, which can actually activate oncogenes. Oncogenes are basically the genes in the system that when they're ill can actually result in cancer, which is why we now have 13 week old puppies that can get serious types of cancer. Not even a little, you know, fat deposit on the side, actual brain cancer and serious organ dysfunction. So according to them, the things not to do if you don't want your pet to get cancer are spaying early, which increases by 50%, spray your lawn with pesticides, fungicides, rodenticides, um, increases by 90%. Topical flea and tick prevention, these are the flea collars or the spray on ones, they're typically so full of chemicals that they can actually poison your pet or give your pet tumors. Feed cheap or tainted pet foods. The most commonly contaminated meat is chicken, which is why it's found in the majority of pet foods. Or improperly done stem cell therapy. So stem cell therapy is supposed to be a way to minimize the effects of cancer and help to the body to fight it off. But if it's done improperly, it can actually speed the growth of the cancer. A little biology for you. Mitochondria are little aspects of the cell that are the little battery. So if your battery doesn't work, your system doesn't work. So if you put a battery that's low in a flashlight, there's no guarantee that it's going to actually turn on. It's the same way if the mitochondria are damaged in the cell, the cell's ATP is too low, meaning your body doesn't have enough energy in the cells to actually fight it off. So the nucleus, which is the center of the cell, turns on the oncogenes, which is the cancer-causing genes, to replicate and it provides more energy to the body. Unfortunately, you don't want your oncogenes turned on because that can actually cause cancer in your pet. What a lot of researchers don't talk about is that sugar feeds cancer. The more junk food you eat or your dog eats, the more cancer cells will flourish in the body. The most interesting part about this first section of the workshop is that based on research from the leading metabolic disease veterinarians, specialists, things like that, cancer is only 10% genetic. The other 90% is lifestyle environment. 
which to a lot of people that's very, very surprising because we think, oh, our body just, you know, started making cells the wrong way or something happened, but quite likely it's something in their environment that's poisoned them or the food that they're getting isn't strong enough to keep their body at a rate where it can protect itself and heal itself from that. So that was the first part of the workshop. The second part is all about Keto Pet, and I know I've talked about this before. It's a huge sanctuary in Texas where they take dogs with cancer and study them. They're really big on ketogenic diets and they have a huge team of veterinarians and um, animal nutritionists there that study this. They have, I think it, in the documentary it said they spent six million dollars trying to get this research done because the benefits of the ketogenic diet that they found were absolutely mind-blowing. So let me tell you what the diet is first. A ketogenic diet is high in fat, medium in protein, and low in carbs. The reason why it's low in carbs is because carbs are basically sugar. When they're broken down in the body, they're broken down into sugar. If you want to starve the cancer, you want to give the body as little sugar as possible. So therefore, you don't want a lot of carbs. But if you give too much protein, you can actually activate gluconeogenesis, which is a huge other conversation. I'm not going to get into it now. But basically, your body starts overworking itself, and that's why they only put a medium amount of protein in there. Now, according to a bunch of their researchers, there's something called Warburg's theory, which is when the misfunctioning of metabolism causes our body to produce energy in an alternative way, which causes cancer cells. Cancer cells consume 200 times more glucose, which is sugar, than regular cells. So then you have to eat an inordinate amount of food to feed the cells enough that they can function. But of course you don't want to feed the cancer cells because then the tumors or the tumors will grow or it will spread throughout the body. But starch is the cheapest ingredient you can put in pet food. But a lot of people don't know what they're feeding their pet or just grab a bag from the grocery store shelf and then they think that they're doing the best that they can for their dog. But a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. But the leading researchers in the world found that with a cancer, sorry, with a ketogenic diet, you can actually stop cancer growth. They did, one of their favorite stories was about, I think it was a pit bull. And this dog came in when they rescued them and the dog had five separate tumors. Started her on a ketogenic diet then I think it was a month later, there was only three. Next month later, there was one. And after that, they were completely gone. So a lot of times, what you fuel your body with determines how well you function. So I know that if I eat a lot of junk food or pasta, that I get very lethargic. I don't feel like doing a lot. But if I have light snacks throughout the day, if I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, then I feel good and I can go about and function throughout my day. An interesting problem is that pet food companies market grain-free pet food. And we think, okay, great, this has less grain, we'll feed it to our pets, and they won't get cancer. False. I did the same thing with Kaya before I knew better. And grain-free pet foods can actually have a higher starch content than regular kibble. Because instead of giving, writing it on the label, on the ingredients label of types of starch that we know, they list other types that we don't cons we don't think of typical consumers that they don't think of as starch. So the starch content is actually higher. So the best thing to do is just not feed kibble altogether, according to their document and all of their research. The third part was the blueprint to recovery and well-being. It basically talks about all the different types of things that can stimulate cancer growth and then it talks about some studies so i'm going to go through those and then the last part is top five supplements for longevity so 48 
they did a few studies and 48 out of 70 household chemicals were found in pets blood at a higher concentration than in humans why because they spend more time they're exposed to surfaces that get cleaned they look out of the toilet bowl they spend time rolling in the grass so they their bodies absorb more of the chemicals than we do and especially if you have babies in the house or young children do you really want to use cleaners that are full of chemicals probably not a really easy way to go about this is to replace your cleaning products with natural substitutes. Now this may take a while and a bit of research, but we use all natural cleaning products in my house and Kyle has never had an issue with that. She is almost three, but she's never had a toxicity issue, which is very exciting. Reading through my notes, they're using a lot of big biology words, so I'm trying to figure out which parts to try and explain Okay, when food is processed at high temperatures, proteins called hetero heterocyclic amines are produced, which are carcinogens, meaning they cause cancer. So every time kibble is made, the kibble to get it into that nice little grain shape that we know, it's processed with high heat procedures, which create the heterocyclic amines, there we go, um, that can actually attribute to cancer. So they, scientists tested 25 commercial pet foods and 24 out of the 25 had high, high concentrations of heterocyclic amines in them, which is really dangerous. And they did a hair analysis on some of the dogs. 14 out of 16 dogs had a very high concentration of heterocyclic amines in their hair. So they actually tested the composition of the hair. So it really gets into their bodies and without knowing what we're putting in their bodies, we can't really know what's happening on the inside. But carcinogens such as heterocyclic amines sit in the cell membrane and they replicate and they replicate and they create what are called reactive oxygen species which are bad. They are pro-inflammatory, pro meaning they help the body. They're supposed to help the body, but they don't. Because they're pro-inflammatory, meaning they stimulate inflammation in the body and cancer is chronic inflammation in the body. So another bad thing, you really do not want carcinogens in your pet. They did some more studies about pets with high carb diets and found that they have higher constant, higher risk of skin disease, ear infections, lymphomas, which are fat deposits on the skin on the side, anal gland infection, infections, metabolic diseases. So it's a pretty broad list, but thinking of all the other things that high carb diets can do, we know what it does to people because most people do studies on people instead of on animals, but we know when you eat a lot of carb heavy foods that you gain weight, that's how it is. And then there's all these other complications such as cardiovascular health, joint problems, etc. So that's always something to think of. But if Dr. Becker um, knows how research works and typically it's the studies with a drug at the end of the rainbow that at the end of the study, they say, okay, this drug improved this, this, this. So now we can market it and get people to buy it. Those are the studies that are funded. Studies such as the ones being done at Keto Pet are typically not funded, which is why the people who started it had to put up $6 million to do this study to prove that ketogenic diets can actually reverse cancer. So they also did a study in Finland where they had four categories of dogs. The first were fed kibble and continued to be fed kibble. Second one was raw, continued to be fed raw, and then dry to raw and raw to dry, just to see. And they tested for the presence of homocysteine, which is an inflammatory in the body, just due to the kibble. So when the raw continued to be fed raw, they obviously had the lowest value, so their baseline was 0 0.17 micromolar, which is Micromolar is just a measurement, it's very, very small. But 
seems insignificant, but the dry fed dry, 1.57. So that's a serious increase between the two. The group that went from raw to dry, so their starting should have been very low. When they're switched to dry, it went halfway. So between 0 0.17 to 0 0.77, that's a serious increase in inflammation in the body just from eating carbs. The dry fed ones who should have started at 1.57, who got continued or sorry, switched to raw, their homocysteine levels went down to 0 0.3. So you can see how much eating fresh food decreases inflammation in the body that if you have any joint pain or toxicity in your body, switching to healthy fresh foods can make a massive difference. And this seems like it should be common sense for most people, but they had to do a study to prove it because a lot of people don't want or are not ready to accept the fact that feeding their dogs, dogs anything other than kibble is acceptable. So the point of ketogenic diets is to push the body into what's called ketosis which is when the body uses ketones as fuel instead of glucose. You don't want to use glucose as a fuel because that means there's you need sugar in the body and the sugar, again, feeds cancer cells. So this one's a little bit longer just because this is when they went into all the scientific stuff and talked to all the researchers. When your pet is in cyclic ketosis, meaning going in and out of ketosis, you cannot overfeed calories, meaning you have to keep them to a set amount of food because cancer will then start using the protein as fuel if there's no carbs. So you want to keep their protein levels to a reasonable amount. And there's a lot of science and things which you can see if you read it. I'm going to skip over that just because it's a lot of diagrams and stuff. The top five supplements for longevity are turmeric root, which is the orange powder. You can also make it into golden paste, which is by adding a few other things. Google golden paste if you don't know what it is. It's pretty amazing stuff. Turmeric root is anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer. So a lot of people do this if they have joint pain, if they have organs that are sore and inflamed, especially the liver. It's a good detoxer for that. Again, these are the ones that they mentioned in the study. I'm just presenting the information because they do talk about cannabis and medicinal mushrooms. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Medicinal mushrooms have been found to increase kidney and liver function, improve the skin and coat, which is related to the immune system, prevent viral infections. It's a huge antioxidant. It improves overall health and decreases the risk of cancer. It benefits hemangiosarcomas, which are, again, tumors. It has a high concentration of prebiotics, which is really, really good for the gut biome. A lot of the researchers find that if you have a weak stomach, then your pet is more likely to get cancer. So if you strengthen the gut, which is the core of the body, then the immune system will be strong, the limbs and muscles and everything else will be strong because the body has the nutrients to fight it off. It's a huge immune booster and it's actually a precursor to vitamin D, which has also been found to be really helpful in fighting cancer. Probiotics, which I know I've talked about before and I'm pretty sure I used it as a supplement of the month once. But again, it talks about the importance of the gut biome. 70 to 80% of the immune system of the body is in the lining of the intestinal tract. So if you have a strong stomach and large and small intestine, that means that your body has a stronger chance of fighting it off. When I was studying my traditional Chinese medicine, they actually tell you that if the animal is sick, but they have a strong stomach, they have a good chance of getting better. If they're sick and their stomach is weak, the prognosis is not nearly as good. So it's something else to consider. Cultured foods such as kefir and kombucha and, oh, what's that one? With sauerkraut, there it is. 
Um, those are really good to benefit the gut health. Probiotics obviously are very good. Anything digestive enzymes to help the food go down smoothly, anything like that. Cannabis and hemp actually causes cell cycle arrest, which is stopping the growth of the tumors. So the cells go through a cycle of being born, replicating, replicating, expanding, and then they die. But it stops the cells from expanding, which is called anti-angiogenic, when it stops the spreading of the tumors. Hemp contains CBDs and terpenes, which are both anti-inflammatories, really good anti-inflammatories. They're excellent for pain management because of the anti-inflammatory effect. But those are just some of the highlights of the dog cancer workshops. They are selling the six hour series on the website until the end of the week. I believe the website is dogcancerseries.com, but I could be wrong, just Google it. Um, but if you have a pet with cancer and you're at your wit's end and you can't think of anything else, this is a really good approach. And they have community networks where you can talk to people and ask questions and it's absolutely amazing the results that some of these people are getting so i just wanted to share that with you guys because even if i have to do extra hours of research i know kai does not have cancer but i want her to live to 15 or 16 so i want to keep her as healthy as possible she is on raw right now and i do typically add probiotics or pumpkin or something coconut oil to her food to give her that extra boost whenever she feels unwell she comes to me and looks really sad and pathetic and I know that she wants me to work on her so I you know pat my bed she jumps up and I work on her and whenever she's feels like she's had enough she jumps down and that's it she's not feeling well right now so I'm probably gonna go work on her but I hope you're enjoying your first day of spring get out there and enjoy it have a fantastic rest of your week and I will see you next Tuesday. I was going to talk about the importance of nutrition, but I kind of just did. So I will come up with something else for next week. See you later.